Okay, uh, once again, cause number 22197 in the interest of the price child. Everybody that's going to testify, please raise your hand and be sworn. And that means all the witnesses that are here today, we're going to deal with y'all in just a second, but everybody raise their hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Okay, thank you. A couple things that I need to get on the record before we begin. Uh, this hearing is was reset from... I believe it was last Monday. Is that correct, y'all? Monday the 27th. Okay. So for the record, we all agreed on today at 11 o'clock. I think Mr. Davis or somebody had something this morning. So we needed to start at 11. Uh, also, for the record, uh, I have worked in the Lano Courthouse for about 38 years. And I know that before a holiday, uh, everybody leaves and the courthouse closes at about noon on the days before the holidays. Uh, and so it was necessary for us to do this by Zoom. Otherwise, we might not have a bailiff or everybody else to be around and have a locked courthouse. And that won't work with as many people involved. So I believe y'all circulated uh, a Rule 11 or some type of notice that said everybody agreed to be by Zoom. And that I could also be, be via Zoom based upon the uh, courthouse situation. Um, I had court with Ms. McClure earlier this morning, and I know that she has, she has new internet, so she's been able to um, uh, appear better than she has in the past. But uh, we're having bad weather, and I don't, I don't know about everybody else, but having bad weather at my house, and sometimes my internet has issues also. <clears throat> and uh, my internet person is not here to help me out because I am not an internet guru by any means. So just want to let y'all know that sometimes the weather does affect things. And anyway, and that's it's not me. It's probably a lot of people because as some of y'all know, we have really cruddy internet in the Hill Country. Uh, we are on YouTube, and um, uh, is anybody going to invoke the rule? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. No? Okay. Okay, so everybody just gets to hang out if y'all want to. Might be a little complicated with as many people as we have today, but we'll we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, I think. Anybody Dad, else? Can we, can we yes. do appearances? Can we do appearances? Yes. I was going to just guess since we have so many different people, we're just going to do, I'm going to do call the lawyers and let them um, say their clients. Is that okay? Versus me doing it always like we always do, Ms. Greenwald. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Everybody's ready. Mr. Rogers, identify yourself and your your clients, please. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Dwayne Rogers, Lando County Attorney for the Department of Family Protective Services. Uh, here with us today is uh, Raphael Tovar, the caseworker, and probably joining us will also be Teresa Greenberg. She's the witness that will come in at a later time. Okay. Also, uh, Mr. Tovar, supervisor, Ms. Jacinta Mouton is here, correct? Correct. Jacinta Mouton, supervisor, is here. I do not anticipate calling her. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Shell. I'm Bobby Shell. I represent Dennis Price. There's another attorney from my office who's logged on, Dean McWilliams. He will not be asking any questions or anything. He's here to observe. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Price, you know, you know which one Mr. Price is, Ms. Green Um, he's waving at you. Okay, Ms. McClure. Melissa McClure, I represent Dennis Price the third. Okay. Mr. Davis. Nick Davis uh, for intervener Abigail Moore. Okay, and Miss Moore is here. I see her. <clears throat> okay, Miss uh, sorry, Miss Lang. Your Honor, I'm Rebecca Lang, representing interveners Jamie Dyer and her husband James. Okay, and they're here where it says Jamie Dyer, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I'm Nancy McDougall, and I'm the CASA advocate for uh, Baby Denny. And who? <clears throat> excuse me. Who's your supervisor? Kaylee Willeman oh, is my supervisor, and she's. Present also. We, oh, we have a pro se intervener, don't we? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. And is that Miss Billy Parker? Yes. Okay, Miss Parker, announce yourself, please, and go off mute for a minute to do so. Uh, I don't know how to go off mute. Uh, You're Billy. good. You're off mute now. You're good. And your name is Billy Parker, correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Is her husband also? 
Uh, did he file the papers with you, Ms. Parker? Uh, no, he didn't. Okay, so just only Ms. Billy Parker is the intervener, Ms. Ms. Uh, Green. Okay, so the way I envision doing this, since this is really a placement hearing to decide where a uh, young man should be placed, uh, unless anybody has objections, I want to just begin with uh, Mr. Price, I mean, sorry, Mr. Davis filed the first intervention. And um, I think we did the first home study on uh, Ms. Moore. So I would like for Mr. Davis to begin. And then we'll just go down in that route, unless anybody has a, a better idea of how we want to handle this. No? no okay. Right. Okay, Mr. Davis, you no, make no, I'll go ahead and call uh, Abigail Moore. Thank you. Judge, you broke up. Please, thank you. Go on. Uh, may I proceed, Judge? Yes, sir. All right, Ms. Moore, would you state your full name? My name is Abigail Moore. And how are you related to Dennis III? He is my nephew. Hey, and I'm going to call Dennis the third baby Dennis from here on out just to keep keep track of everything. OK, um, so you're the paternal aunt of Dennis the third. You filed an intervention in this case seeking conservatorship, but most importantly, now placement. Correct. Yes. OK, now when Dennis, the, when, when baby Dennis was um, taken in by the department, that was around September of this last year, September 7th. Correct. Yes. And before that, though, there have been a variety of CPS involvement between the parents, correct? What I understand. And, um, but Dennis, at the time he was taken, baby Dennis, at the time he was taken, he was about 10 months old, correct? Eight, to nine, eight, to old. eight to nine months old, yeah. Now, before he was taken, describe your level of involvement and how you'd seen and interacted with baby Dennis beforehand. Well, um, I went to see him when he was born. I went to visit him at um, their home. Um, I would go to different holidays um, at my parents' house and we would get together. It was that we had a, a wedding, an anniversary, a Thanksgiving, different holidays. I didn't go to Kingsland very often. I kind of keep my distance from anything that's going on over there. So um, I didn't spend a lot of time driving over there, but about three or four times. Um, Carrie and my mother both brought him to see me multiple times uh, to my house in Huntsville. And um, so I got to spend a lot of time with him then too. So, okay. So over the course of his short eight month period, you saw him a good number of times, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of times. Um, now let's talk about your statements about Kingsland. What do you mean by you try to distance yourself from the Kingsland? Uh, area? Well, as far as I knew, there was a lot of different things that happened over there. I wasn't completely sure of what that was, besides that it was um, very unpredictable. Uh, and I just didn't want myself my or my children around anything that I didn't know how it would turn out or how it would be. So I kept myself distanced away from it, my children away from it. And when we did go, we were there for very short periods of time to make sure that it stayed safe for my children. So fair to say that there was a lot of high drama, uncertainty and conflict in the Kingsland area, correct? Yes, a lot of drama, yes. Okay. And where do you live? I live in Huntsville, Texas. Okay, and how long have you lived there? I've lived in Huntsville for 18 years. I've lived in the home that I am right now for five years. Okay. And uh, briefly describe the, the setup of the home you're at right now. I live in a four bedroom, a three bath home. We live on about 300 acres. I have um, plenty of space. I have the three bedrooms for my three children, but I'm, you know, 
I have a plenty of space for a dentist to have his own room. Okay. And then let's talk about your kids. How, how old are they? I have the three children. My oldest son is almost 14. My middle child is a boy. He's 11. And my daughter, she's my youngest and she's nine. Okay. And so how old are you? I'm 38. And are you married? Yes, I am. And how long have you been married? We've um, almost been married for 15 years. And just briefly describe, so what's your work schedule like? What do you do? Well, I'm a stay-at-home mom. So um, my schedule is taking care of my children. I get up every morning and get breakfast and stuff done for my husband so he can head out the door. And then I start waking up children and doing breakfast and getting dressed and getting ready to go, take them to school. Um, I run errands, grocery shop, take care of the home, take care of, uh, you know, gardening and stuff that I like to do. I go, I'm also a volunteer at the school. So sometimes I'm up at the school. I do PTO things with the school. I pick up my children and we come home, we do dinner and homework and I volunteer at the church. So we spend time there, but my schedule is mostly all revolved around my children and any extracurricular activities that they have or things that they're doing. Okay. And what does your husband do for a living? He's a logger. He, um, he has his own business where he contracts under his brother. He goes to work every morning about, you know, five o'clock in the morning and he works till about four every day and same thing every day. <laughs> okay. And as far as resources go, you, your husband owns his own business. Are y'all quite fortunate? Y'all have a lot of resources? We're, we're doing very well right now. Yes. Okay. Um, what time does your husband usually get home again? Did you already say that? Uh, yeah, I said he, he they um, they close the job down about four every single day, depending upon how far away he is from the house. There's times when he's 20 minutes from the house. There's times when he's an hour, depending upon that. He comes home and, you know, it can be 430. It can be five. But he you know, it's about that every day. Yeah, so describe his level of level of involvement with your children. Oh, when he comes home, we go straight to dinner together. Um, you know, playing outside. I have one that is a big fisherman. So we take him out in the ponds and fish. I mean, we have one that likes to play basketball a lot. So we do a lot of basketball outside and, and we play together with our children a lot. We do homework together with our children. He's very involved. Okay. Your honor, may I share my screen? Yes, sir. Miss Moore, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. So I'm showing you what's labeled as intervenors exhibit number two. Do you have personal mm -hmm. in this document? Yes, I do. Okay. Are these photographs? Yes. These are the photographs with you and your kiddos and baby Dennis? That, that is uh, me holding baby Dennis. That's my daughter. And that is one of my great nephews, Stetson, on her back. Okay. And then I'm just going to scroll through them. This is you with baby Dennis and, and yes. uh, your family. For the past couple of months, right? Before he was even taken, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was lots of times that we had him and he was at my house or we were visiting him. It was lots of different times with him okay. and all my children. I'd offer in uh, Intervenors Exhibit 2, Your Honor. Any objections? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Intervenors 2 is admitted. Okay, thank you, Judge. And then I'm now going to show you what's labeled as um, ex interveners exhibit number three. And Ms. Davis, Ms. Davis, hold on. We've got a bunch of interveners. So I'm going to say intervener more. Okay. Sorry, Judge. Sorry. Okay. Judge. Okay. Sorry. Intervener more exhibit number three. This is your this home is your area, home. correct? Yes, it is. Okay. And um, and one of these rooms will be one that you could set up for, for baby Dennis, correct? Yes. Mm hmm. Okay, anybody, um, hold on. Uh, anybody have any, are you done with all the three? three yes, pictures? Judge, I'd offer in three. Okay, any objections? No, Your Honor. Okay, no, no. Four, number three is exhibit. Is that um, all right, now, Miss uh, Miss Moore, so you just let's talk about your support system. What Describe your support system out where you live. <laughs> in Huntsville, my little sister lives here. 
we have our children in the same school together. So we use each other a lot for times picking up kids from school or being a part of things or just letting our kids be together. So we're very close. I also have my husband's entire family lives here. Uh, They've been a huge support to me throughout all my, you know, with my children. I have a sister-in-law that I'm very close to and, um, and she lives here and we've always been really good to help each other out. And so I have a great support system here. And then um, just backgrounds on everybody, any history of drug abuse, alcohol abuse, any arrest records with, with any of these people you're associating with? None of them. No. Okay. Now let's talk briefly though now about, but that's in the Huntsville area. Mm -hmm. Um, Your mother, uh, Nancy Price, correct? Yes. Okay. Let's just let's just discuss this right out. So so she's had she's had some involvement in this background, correct? Yes. Okay. She has baby Dennis's brother, right? Half brother? Yes. And who's that? Canyon Price. Okay. And from time to time, she had been helping out with baby Dennis, correct? Yes. And there have been a variety of, of issues that had arisen between Carrie and, and Dennis. Uh, baby Dennis's father, and and even at some points with with uh, Carrie and your mother, correct? I guess. Okay, Your Honor. So now, it, it's, it's, your Honor, I object, but I'm going to qualify my objection. Um, this is an entire line of leading, but I would just want to put on the record, Your Honor, that I'm okay with allowing Mr. Davis to continue on this line, if as long as the court acknowledges that that's going to how we're going to proceed with the hearing to make it go faster in this period of time. Is that, can everybody agree to that? I mean, I'll agree to it, but. (laughs) As long as it applies to all of us, I'll agree to it. I will will not have any leading objections if that makes everybody happy. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Ms. Shell, are y'all good? Yes. Agree. Thank you. Going fast is a good thing. (laughs) Trying. Um, So, now, but you understand some conflict had arisen, I guess, around the time that this case actually started, correct? That even involved your mother, right? Yes. Okay. Well, so just, just tell the court where your mother lives in relation to where you live. She lives in Seabrook, Texas. It's about two hours from my house. Okay. And um, you, of course, are you, are you, do you think it's important that baby Dennis has a relationship with his brother? I think that's very important. Yes, he's always had a relationship with him. And so I really think that they should keep that and it should continue. And he has another brother too, correct? Well, Wesley was, but she signed her rights away to him. I'm sorry, Wesley what? Wesley was her son, but she signed her rights away to him. Carrie did. But in a sense, he has another another brother or or cousin. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And do you think it's important that there's involvement with Wesley? Yes, of okay. course. Um, now, um, regarding the things with your mother, you understand that if the court puts any orders in place about your mother's involvement abilities with baby Dennis, you are to follow those. Correct. Yes, and I would follow them immediately. There's no problem to me. At all. You're not depend- are you dependent upon your mother for any form of support? No, none at all. So how do you and your husband and your children feel about taking in baby Dennis? My husband and my children, and of course myself, we're all very excited. We all agree that we would love him to be in our home. And we're anxiously waiting. We would love it. It would fit perfectly and seamlessly with us because we are already a family with young children and already right in the middle of raising children. And so he would fit seamlessly in our home. Okay. And I think there was a concern raised in your home study about a pool. Can, can yes. You that concern? Yes. Sorry, I'm, a- I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Um, I didn't get your full question, Mr. Davis. There was a concern sorry. about the pool. Yes. I, I believe that in your home study, was there any concern about a pool that you had? Yes, Mr. there was. 
Okay. And yes, there was. And um, the concern was, you know, it's an above ground pool. I have a pool, but I have removable stairs and they don't go on until there is an adult there to watch the children. And then the stairs are put on and then we're able to go swimming. We, we're, it's never unattended and the stairs are not on there. And then um, when did you take your home study? My home study was a couple um, at the end of September. It was pretty immediately after was taken. So, and what was your understanding of the results of your home study? My understanding was that they were, they went very well. I didn't have any um, backup questions or any, any, you know, follow-up or anything. It was passed immediately. And did you have conversations with Carrie and Dennis about placement? Yes. The day that uh, Dennis the third was taken, Within the hour, I had a phone call from Carrie and Dennis. Um, they were both very frantic and upset and um, and asked me and, and essentially were just begging me to please call CPS and get our baby. And of course, I you know, immediately called um, the investigator, Mike Bowser, I think is how you say his name. I immediately called him. I immediately handed over any information that he needed, um, Social Security, driver's license, Everything that he asked me was given within an hour of the moment that or maybe even 15 minutes, maybe of the moment that he asked. And I was very soon after Carrie and Dennis called me. Um, let's talk about a little bit of background. How long have you known Carrie? Well, I've actually known Carrie since about um, 2016. Um, Dennis the second, my brother, started working for her first husband, Cody Young. Um, they became close you know, friends at the time and Canyon and Wesley are about the same age. And so they started getting to spend a lot of time together, playing together. They went to school together. Um, I'm, I'm thinking second grade is when they started going to school together. And um, I actually mostly got to know Carrie. I mean, I knew Wesley before I knew Carrie because Wesley was always in my mother's home. We spent a ton of time with him of uh, summer vacations and going to down to the river. I would come to bring my children to the river. So, Miss Moore, I'm going to stop you real quick. I'm going to try to break some of this up now. Um, okay. So, regarding okay. regarding you, you've known Carrie since around that around that 2016 mm -hmm. period, and what was and then at what point did did Carrie uh, uh, take in Wesley? Oh, she um, had she got rights to him when he was three years old. Okay. Or around, around that is what she told me. And Wesley is, is what relation was Wesley to Carrie beforehand? It's her nephew. It's Laura Henderson's son. And, and so when she had possession of Wesley, Canyon and Wesley just organically became friends. Is that what you're saying? Well, mostly because of Dennis working with Cody and said, Hey, here's a, here's a friend for you. And then they started hanging out together and, a so lot. before Dennis and Dennis and and uh, Carrie started their relationship, what was the interaction your mom had with Wesley and Kenya? Well, Carrie relied on my mother from very soon on as a babysitter, a support system to help her with Wesley. Um, I mean, Wesley was brought over to the house a lot by Carrie. And that was while she was married to Cody Young, when they were divorced and when she was married to Alex. There was a long period of time that uh, Wesley was brought over to stay with my mom and my mom kept him a lot. Have y'all continued a relationship with Wesley? We have until maybe lately, but yes, he we've always had a good relationship with Wesley. Um, all right. Now, so when you did you get a chance to get to know Carrie over the years? Yes, of course I did. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, you described your involvement is not not as much. But did you have more involvement with her later on? I mean, any time that I was there, we had lots of conversations and, and sat and talk. All the girls would sit and talk while we were cooking Thanksgiving or hanging out. So, yes, I had many conversations with her. The the biggest amount of conversations I had with her was after the baby was taken into foster care and she called me all the time, frantic and upset and talking and, you know, and I was trying to be a support for her. Did she, did she ever come stay with you for a little bit? Yes. Yes. She came and stayed with me and, um, 
she came to hang out with the uh, kids and go watch a, we had a, my nephews did a fair show of 2022 in the summer and she came and she came and, you know, and stayed with me. Right. So now what I want to ask you about is did Carrie ever talk to you about her relationship with her own family? Yes, she did. Um, there was many times that things would come up. Carrie was an open book. She really liked to talk about, you know, what was going on. If, if her and Dennis had had an argument or anything, she would, you know, talk to us about it. Um, we had a, we had a, you know, a lot of conversations about her family. She said that a lot of the, a lot of her, let me break it up. So, so you've talked about her family. Mm -hmm. What, how would she, how did she describe her family to you? The dynamic, uh, very volatile, very vindictive, and um, very aggressive. Their family was. Um, they did a lot of arguing. They did a lot of blocking on Facebook. I'm not talking to you anymore. Put no trespassing. You know, the very. Um, I mean, abusive. <laughs> she told me that um, her stepfather was very abusive. Her mother would quit talking to her and lock the gate and not allow her to come see her. She wouldn't answer the phone to her when she needed her. She always made the point to us that um, she could call us and we would always answer. She could call any of us and we would answer. And her family wasn't like that. They would quit talking to her and they would, you know, hate her and um, give up on her and not be there for her. And she, um, she always told us, I wish I had a family like y'all. And we would always assure her that we were her family. Now, um, now, have you have you wanted to try to avoid having to 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 get involved in 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 these you know throwing things about the other side of the family out? Yes, I don't like this at all. <laughs> do, you, do you think that this is going to make things difficult to move forward um, with? Because it, do you think it's important for Dennis to have a relationship? Maybe Dennis have a relationship with both sides of the family. Oh, yes, of course I do. I think he should have a relationship with everybody. I just think that he's it's not a safe, safe place to live. I think it's, um, you know, Carrie made it very well known that the homes were dirty, that the actions were, you know, untrustworthy, that there was a lot of drinking and a lot of drug use on her side of the family. And, um, you know, and, and she wasn't comfortable being there. She didn't want the baby there. She said that um, Jamie's home was very dirty and dog hair, and she didn't even want to put the baby down. She just wanted to go home and she, which was to her and Dennis's home. And, um, you know, and that her mother's home was full of trash and um, just things. It was, you know, just full of stuff that she couldn't even move around in there. And she, it was very, it made her very anxious and very upset and she didn't like it. And so I do, I feel like she made that very well known to, to me for sure. And in regarding her sister and Jamie, did they have a good relationship based on your understanding? Based on my understanding, it was very, up and down. There might have been a moment that they had a good relationship, but uh, as far as I know, it was very, very toxic. Very much. Um, they argued a lot. They, she, uh, you know, Jamie would quit talking to her altogether. They would. Um, I mean, to, she told me that Jamie was very, very controlling over her, and when she couldn't control her, that she would get very mad at her. So they just had a very volatile you know, relationship. Okay. Um, now, was it your under, what was your understanding of what Carrie wanted for placement with baby Dennis after you'd taken your home study? It was my understanding that she wanted me to call me all the time. She would tell me what um, anybody was saying, Raphael, Melissa McClure, you know, she would always be calling me and saying, you know, Raphael said, if she got very excited on, um, she sent me a text message on September um, 15th, I think, or 13th, that Raphael had told her that placement could happen by the weekend or maybe not by the weekend, but at least by Monday. She was very excited. She called me and was just over the moon. And, and it, it, of course, didn't happen. But 
She, you know, plenty of messages. She would call me and send messages of, I don't understand why nobody's listening to me. I want him to go to you. I, I can't understand why they're not worried about him. He's a baby. Why are they not putting him where I want him? I mean, I had lots of phone calls and conversations with her about that. Let me, let me break a few things up. Now, she eventually, Carrie did eventually listed her mother and Jamie as potential placement options, correct? Mm -hmm. It was my understanding that nobody wanted, in her eyes, nobody wanted me. She was very upset about that. They kept um, CPS and Melissa McClure and whoever would say things to her like, you need, you know, find somebody else. And she would send me screenshots of the pictures of the text messages. Can you find anybody else? Can you send us anybody else? And uh, she kept, you know, re saying, please just give them to my sister. But and my sister-in-law, me, but uh, I think she felt so upset and anxious for him to get out of foster care that she started trying to find somebody else also. Okay. Your Honor, may I share my screen again? Ms. Moore, I'm showing you, if you can see it, what's labeled as Intervenor Moore's Exhibit Number 4. Right? Yes. Uh-huh. Are these text messages? Yes, between me and Carrie. Okay. Um. I'll go ahead and offer in exhibit, intervener Moore's exhibit number four, Judge. So, Ms. Moore, I want to just go over a little bit of this right here. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. Ms. Moore, do you have a device on in your room? There's an echo coming from your device. No, ma'am. I don't have anything on. I don't know. I have my phone sitting here, but should I turn my phone off completely? Or maybe just move it away. I'm not sure what it is, but there's an echo coming from your device. Sometimes that happens when, when YouTube is active with someone who's not on. YouTube. I don't have a TV on or anything. I don't know. What, it, what is your phone on? Is, is it just on, on, or are you, is it on? No, this? I just mean it's on, like on, like your phone's on, you know? Okay. That should be okay. I don't have anything else in here. I have a printer. I mean, I have a TV, but it's not turned on. But let's try it again. Okay. So, Ms. Moore, just looking at this first text. Yes. It's coming from Carrie, correct? Yes. Uh, what is she saying right here? She, she wants me to, she wants me to um, maybe not follow the rules and allow her and Dennis to see the baby even at a different time than when they're supposed to. Okay. And of course, you mentioned your mom won't do that because she's going to be a rule follower, right? Yes. And of course, I told them I would be a rule follower also. I was trying to be very, um, I was trying to be very, you know, kind and not upset her, but I was not going to not follow the rules either. So I gave her a vague response. Yeah. All right. And so, but clearly, even at this point in time, after the conflict had actually come up between her and your mom, she still depended on your mom quite a bit too, right? Oh, man. Very much dependent on my mom. Very much. Um, so let's come down here um, mm -hmm. on this next page, this text right in here, because y'all are talking about, um, uh, you know, support, things like that. What does she mean by this right here? This last well, she text. had asked me, she had asked me to be on her meeting. And um, of course, I was said, of course, I'll be there. So on the day of, I asked her, you know, if she still wanted me to. And she was stating right there that she had her mother and Jamie and um, she knew that Jamie would be upset if any price was on there, but if she had a price, it would be my mom. And, um, but it was my understanding that the CPS or Melissa McClure, whoever was on the meeting with her really pushed for her to not have anybody on Dennis's side to have her own support system, even though we were her support system but um, so she had to find somebody else. Okay. And then, um, I mean, then regarding any of these other messages, you're saying um, uh, that you got CPR training and blood trauma training, it, just anything that, anything that could, that could help everybody. Be well, she, um, I'm sorry. Since, wait a minute, Mr. I didn't get the end of your question. Sorry. You just, you were doing anything to help alleviate concerns about anything for placement, right? Yes, I, um, since she had got 
her nephew before, she would constantly call me and give me like advice on what she did before and what she thought I needed to do. So she asked me, she said that was very important for me to go get that and um, go get CPR training and stuff for the baby so that, you know, CPS would like that I did that. So I went immediately and got that done and sent the, my uh, results over to CPS so they would know. I was trying to do everything she asked me and everything that CPS would want to help get the baby. Babies removed September 7th within roughly a week. You've already done those things, correct? Yeah, I was very quick. Oh, yes. I, it might have been the, I mean, it was like days after that I got it done. Now, I want to look at this last message right here. Actually, it's on the left-hand side on the bottom. On, it was on September 15th. Mm -hmm. Just, what is she talking about here? This will be the baby's first Halloween and Christmas. What is her concern to you? She was concerned that he would be with foster care throughout all those different holidays and walking and crawling. And uh, she was worried that he wasn't with people he knew and that he was with new people. And um, she wanted him placed immediately. And she said right there, it says, I wish somebody could stand up for the baby's well-being and place him with you immediately. She thought nobody was standing up for him. And that was her big concern. Did she, did she also mention criminal records regarding her family? Yes. Yes. She said that every, well, she said everybody in her family had criminal records. So that, you know, that everybody had a background and that's why she didn't want him with him with any of them. And then when, when baby Dennis wasn't being placed, did Carrie ever talk to you about frustrations? Well, she was very upset. She was very frustrated. She sent out messages to everybody, you know, in this room right now on this list. She would send as many times as she could call as many people and she would call me upset all the time. She was so upset crying and we would, you know, try to talk her through it. I would try to help her through it and support her through it. But she was so upset. Um, just um, emotionally speaking, what was Carrie's mental health like that you'd observed? It was very up and down. Um, her, her mental state was always unpredictable. It was very unpredictable. You weren't really sure at what you know point she was going to be really, really upset or be even kill and be good, you know, and, and calm. And, and so it was very unpredictable. And then, of course, um, your brothers. Let's talk about your brother's demeanor. Mm -hmm. Similar? Oh, yes. Very similar. I mean, yes, he was very upset. They were both very upset. They were, you know, very upset with each other, blaming each other, also trying to work together. It, it was a very upsetting, very, um, you know, anxiety high time through both of them. And would you agree, regardless of situation, placement outside of that home is probably best for baby Dennis? Regardless, Yes, I do. I do agree. Um, and are you asking the court to place, make placement with you immediately? Yes, I'm ready. You, you've been, you've, you've had your home study approved since the end of September, correct? Roughly. Yes. Okay. And has anybody asked you to do anything else to make placement happen? No, they have not. You're willing to, you're going to follow every order the court has regarding what happens with baby Dennis, correct? Oh, yes. Any order that is ever put in place, I will follow them exactly like I'm told to. And then you believe this is in the best interest of the child to be placed with you now? I most certainly do. I really think it is. I really think it's important for him to get away from all the drama and situations that have happened in that area. In my area, in my home, our home is very stable and very safe, very calm. We have a scheduled life that is, you can pretty much mark it down where we'll be and what we'll be doing. It's very scheduled and it's very calm and it's very safe. And I do think it is a great place for him to be. I think it's very important. And I, I do think it's in his best interest. And so you think a fresh start in a new area would be best, correct? Yes, I do. I think he should be taken out of that area and, and have a fresh start with a good future. And will you help facilitate visits with his, with his family? Oh, of course. I think that's important. Side. Yes, I think that's important. Okay. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Mr. Uh, Rogers, any questions of, 
Ms. Moore? Uh, Your Honor, given the nature of the hearing uh, and the fact that this is to some degree uh, intervener versus intervener, <laughs> I might recommend that Ms. Lang uh, be first okay. across under the circumstances. That's, I know that's a little out of order normally, but I think that's yeah. appropriate. That's fine. Um, and uh, we can go off a of screen save, screen share. Sorry, Robert. Sure. So in, you, in your testimony early on, you were talking about you saw baby Dennis at birth. You visited him. No, no, early the, on, early on, not at the actual birth. I wasn't able to make that because my my children have a, a schedule a lot. And my son was playing basketball at the time. He was very busy at his games. And so we weren't able to actually make his actual birth. Um you know, and also the pandemic made it kind that of hard. If, if I may, my, my question was going to be, okay. I was just trying to figure out at which home you visited at, because your words were, I visited at their home, and I'm trying to figure out which one of their homes we're talking about. Okay, well, Dennis and Carrie's home is right next door to my mother's home, and so I went to stay at my mother's home in Kingsland, my mother and my father's home in Kingsland. I spent the night. It's a pretty good drive for me, so when I go, I, you know, I I, like I said, I don't stay long, but I did spend the night and get up and leave in the morning. But um, yes, their home is right next door. So I was at their <laughs> home and my mother's home, both of them. And I just was a little confused about because I found I heard they also have a place in Seabrook, I believe. So I wasn't uh, quite my sure. parents do. Yes. But I was in Kingston okay. when I went to see him. <laughs> OK, very good. And so um, your Mr. Davis um, brought up Canyon, and that's, mm -hmm. I guess, Dennis's older child. Yes, and, it is. Um, so were you around when Canyon was born? You've been a part of his life for a long time. Yes, actually, he was um, He was at my house whenever she went into labor. So, yes, it was. I've been around him his whole life. <laughs> wow. So, Heather, um, his and mother she wasn't had... married to Dennis. Is that right? No, they were not. How old was Heather? Um, 19, I think. She was 19 was, or was her, So she was visiting you when she was in labor? Well, actually, she was visiting to go to a, um, a fall festival thing that we have here in Huntsville. And um, she got to feeling bad at the fall festival. And she went home to my house. And then she went into labor. So she had, she had him here in Huntsville. But ultimately, actually, it was it was we were all walking around. I'm sorry, as a family. That's that's OK. But um, ultimately, who has custody of Canyon now? My mother, Nancy okay. Price. And did how long has she had custody of Canyon? I think he was about two years old or around that. I'm not, I'm not okay. certain on the date. OK. And have you had the opportunity, um, I understand maybe Canyon goes with you to some of the visits to see baby Dennis, is that right? He, yeah, he's went to all of them, but one because he was sick and we didn't want to get the baby sick, so he missed one. Okay. And so um, has Canyon stayed with your mother all the time or has it been a period of time when he didn't stay at your mother's house? No, he's always been at my mother's house. Um, I think there might have been a, a small, well, there was a small amount of time when Dennis and Heather had an apartment before um, she was, he was in my mom's custody that they lived mm -hmm. there. But I mean, he was dropped off at my mother's house pretty much every yeah. single day and always. And is it your understanding that that's what Heather wanted, that she wanted your mom to take, good, take care of Canyon? Oh, Yes. Very much. And she, and were you, um, so, and you, you know, she signed an affidavit of non-prosecution. I mean, a, I'm sorry, a waiver of relinquishment, a voluntary waiver of relinquishment to give your mom the ability to, uh, to adopt Canyon or have con conservatorship of him. Is that right? Yes. So when you went with her to the, um, are you familiar with where the Amegi Bank is? No, I, I did not go to the bank with her. You didn't, and you wouldn't know the Amegi Bank in Harris County? You didn't go? And no, I didn't. She called me and asked me um, to sign that after she signed it. She asked me to come to the house. I went to the house that her and my brother lived at, where my mother lived mm -hmm. at the time. They lived there. And mm -hmm. um, she asked me to come there, and I signed okay. it. So your she, testimony is that Heather asked you to come and to sign that document. That's your yes. testimony. Yes. I object to relevance, 
No, I'm. That's fine. I'll 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 have a rebuttal witness later, Judge. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. I there's there was in and out. Did Mr. Davis? Did you object? Yes, sir. I, I object to relevance on the, the questioning of of the parental rights regarding Canyon. I think that's way in the past that involved this child. Miss Lang, what was your response? Your Honor, the testimony I was eliciting is really more specific to the signature of Miss Abigail Bohr, uh, Moore. I'm sorry, as a witness to the mother's signature at the time she signed her voluntary um, waiver, um, her affidavit of relinquishment for the child. I anticipate some uh, controverting testimony when I do call Ms. Coates at a later time. And we have our testimony now as from Ms. Moore as to if she signed, you did sign, she did sign the document and when she did and who asked her to sign it. Okay, anybody anybody else have an objection? No. Or, Okay, I'm gonna over the rule over the objection. I think that Mr. Davis opened up doors on his uh, direct examination. So go on, Ms. Lundy. Thank you, Judge. So we're talking some more about um, Canyon and Wesley being friends, and um, I think your testimony was you saw saw them quite a bit. You saw Wesley quite a bit. Is that right? Oh yeah. In fact, I think your words were tons of time. Yes, he was. That? Oh, yeah, he was with us a lot because if, when I would come to see my mother um, and and take my children to the river, it was Canyon and Wesley. They were with us. Okay. I thought your earlier testimony was you didn't come up to the Kingsland area very often. No, this was holiday. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can you please um, wait till the questions completely um, asked before you start answering? Because I'm missing the last words of the question. Yes, ma'am. You stayed at Miss Lang, please. I was saying that I, I, my understanding was your earlier testimony was you didn't come to the Kingsland area often, except for holidays and things, you know, occasional things, special occasions. Yes, that is my testimony when Carrie and Dennis were dating and married. Prior to that, there was many years that um, I would come during the summer for a couple of times. Also, maybe me, we've met in Galveston with Wesley. We've met um, at a water park with Wesley and Canyon. Actually, one time Canyon wasn't even there, just Wesley. Uh, there was many times that Wes Wesley was brought with my mom and dad to come to Seabrook. He spent the night in my home multiple times. Uh, there, I mean, I've had a lot of interaction with him. When my brother and Carrie came together, Wesley was still around a lot and he was brought with my mom and dad and brought around. But no, I didn't go to Kingsland as much then. You're right. But at the times that he was brought, I, we had every spring break of 21, 22, and many more before that. But that he came around and we went to water parks together with him. We went to Pleasure Pier in Galveston with him that he came and was with my children and my mom and us. Um, actually, Kayla, uh, Cody Young's wife, would call my mom and ask if he could go with us also, not just Carrie. Kayla would ask if he could come and stay and go to spring break. As she sent my mother, um, you know, lots of lots of times she asked if he could go with us and he was with us a lot. Yes. Okay. Um, so part of your testimony when we were talking earlier about having seen Wesley tons of time and mm -hmm. then your attorney asked you about, you know, Carrie and your relationship with her. And um, your testimony was that y'all sit around and you had a lot of conversations. So that was when Carrie was with Dennis at that time. So, yes, I mean, in the times we had a lot of conversations sitting there. Yes. The times that I was there, we had a lot, we spent a lot of time talking is what I mean okay. by that. Okay. So you've been in your mother's home a lot or through the years, I'm sure up in Kingsland, right? Yes, of course. Have you, have, have you ever noticed that there's something on the wall, a, a bunch of key chain keys or something that are burned up or keys to vehicles? Is there like a, a, a diagram or a decoupage or something with keys on it in your mother's home that you've seen? Or any I do not recall that at all. Okay. You um, shared that Carrie had concerns about her family and she wished she had a family like y'all. When she said that, what did she mean? Well, we have um, a group message that she actually wrote that onto all of us. We have a group text message where we uplift each other. We send, um, you know, songs, we send um, uh, 
um, scriptures, verses, uplifting things like have a good day and, you know, just really nice uplifting things. And throughout this process, we tried to, you know, throughout the the baby being taken, trying to uplift each other and say, you know, this is going to, you know, work hard, do good, you know, keep your head straight, you know, just giving each other a little nice um, uplifting things. And she stated that in there that she wished she had a family that was like us that still stood by and loved each other through hard times. Who all, who all is on that group text? Um, there's a my my older sister, myself, my mom, my dad, my niece, her husband, my nephews, my probably Dennis. There's multiple different text message groups that we have that you know might just be the girls or might just be the you know. A fee, you know, there's, there's multiple ones, but it's mostly all of us. I'm not a hundred percent sure who was on that specific one, but I think it was all those people. Okay. So you're pretty proud to be a part of that family. Well, yes, I'm very, I mean, I love my family. Okay. Um, did you ever go into Carrie and Dennis's home on the property as well? Yes. A few times, not very, not a lot, but yes, I have. Mm-hmm. Did you happen to see those keys hanging on the wall over there? I'm just curious. No, no, I don't. I don't know anything about All right. That. All right. And um, you did share frequently Carrie's anxiety during the time after the baby was removed about her being the baby being in foster care. That was like the one of the greatest concerns and grief for her is the child's being in foster care. Is that right? Is that an accurate assessment of what you shared? Yes, she was very upset about that. Okay. So um, I don't know that we need to put it back up again in um, your intervener Moore's exhibit number four on the very per- first page, there was a, a little bubble that Carrie wrote and I'll just read it to you since we've all read it and we have it in our packet. And she says to you, he comes and goes with wanting to be part of the baby's life. What does she mean by that? When you read that, what did that, who is he she's talking about? Um, Well, she's talking about my brother and they went back and forth to arguing about whether they wanted to be together or apart. I mean, we can all contest to that. This is is more specific about the baby being a part of him being a part of the baby's life. Hold on, Miss Lang, you got to let her finish. Um, Okay, it's hard for me to understand really hard for Miss Greenwald to take it down. So go miss more, finish saying what you were going to say. Okay. I feel like um, Dennis and Carrie both would, um, they really like to sometimes say mean things to each other. And actually Carrie told me that one time, which I can tell by these messages and stuff. They would say the meanest things they could say to each other to get at each other. And this was just one of the many mean, you know, just things that he would say or she would say to him that was um, trying to hurt each other, like, you know, that he didn't want to be a part of them. So then her next sentence was, if he could just see him, I think he'd try. Does that, as if he wasn't trying to be a part of the child's life? Well, it's obvious that he was, because at the same time he was calling CPS and begging to be, you know, a part and getting him out of foster care and everything. I, I don't know what kind of mental state anybody's in when they were talking in those messages. I, I didn't really, I mean, I really don't know what anybody was trying to say there. All right. I passed the witness, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Anybody have any questions, Ms. Moore? Yes, Your Honor. I have a few. Ms. Moore, my name is Dwayne Rogers. I represent CPS in this case. Um, Sir. Thank you for being here today. Uh yes, you testified you didn't feel safe for yourself and your kids at the Price Residence in Kingsland due to the drama. Is that correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and was the drama, was that uh, arguments between Dennis and Carrie? I knew that there was arguments. I'm, I never really knew this, you know, the full aspect of anything, but I knew that there was police involved sometimes. And, um, I just am not, you know, me and my husband both are very, we've never had any interaction with police officers or any interaction with any kind of arguing or anything like that. I had no clue what was happening or what it was like. I just didn't want my children to ever 
be a part of police officers showing up and asking, you know, what did you witness or anything? I was very much wanted to stay away from anything like that for my children. Do you have any knowledge of any uh, criminal charges or arrests with respect to either Carrie or Dennis from some of those arguments? I, I do know that, um, that there, that she assaulted my mother. Uh, she told me about that. She sent us messages about that. Um, but I mean, I, I don't, I was never, you know, there or anything that was just them talking to me about it and, and telling me that. So is it fair to say that Nancy Price was part of this drama and arguments that were ongoing between Carrie well, and Dennis? I would say that she was there when it's after it started. I don't think she was there to be a part of starting any arguments or be in the middle of that. I think it was more after the arguments happened, she came in. Would it surprise you to learn that she was involved in some of the disputes and arguments? Yes. Uh, were you aware that there were charges filed against Dennis uh, arising from an argument that occurred in Travis County, Texas? Yes. Um, Mike Bowser told me about it when I called him and asked him about it, which I mean, I knew I knew something. I'm sorry. I'm going to object to relevance. Uh, Your Honor, I think it's relevant to show the reasons why there was the drama and the safety issues uh, in the Kingsland residence. And I also believe that it's relevant that uh, in many cases, Nancy Price was involved. Uh, and so that leads to some of the department's concerns about her, about her participation. But Dennis's criminal history is not relevant to placement in this case. I'm just trying to establish that it wasn't simply uh, Carrie Price is the aggressor, Your Honor. Also not relevant. Uh, overrule. You can go ahead and answer, Ms. Moore. Are you aware of charges against Dennis and Travis County for assaulting Carrie Price? I'm not aware of actually what, you know, occurred, I, as I am not aware of really of what occurred at any of them. But yes, I was told by Mike Bowser what um, he, he explained to me what he thought had happened. You mentioned on several occasions that Carrie was desperate to uh, get baby Dennis out of foster care. Is that a fair summary of your testimony? Yes. Would it surprise you to know that she had asked other related parties to take baby Dennis? No, um, it wouldn't. It was a very, um, very stressful time. And, and she would tell us sometimes, well, I'll just have to find somebody else if they're not going to give him to you. Do you have knowledge of some of the other people that uh, Carrie asked to take baby Dennis at that, at that time period? I mean, not, not really. I'm not completely sure. Did you have any reason to believe that she had asked Jamie Dyer to take baby Dennis? She said at times, I guess I'm going to have to ask my sister, but I wasn't sure if she did. or I wasn't sure what she did. She had never told me anything about that. Did, uh, did she mention to you that she possibly would have been interested in Kathy Anderson in San Antonio as being a possible oh, um, On that case, she told me that she wrote out on Facebook, would anybody please foster my baby? I um, can't get him out of foster care. And that is where Kathy came in. As far as I know, she had no relationship with her until that moment. And that's what she told me. So Carrie so, made a Facebook post that's what forward. she told me. Okay. And she, that... we, she sent us a text message stating that. Okay. I have nothing further. Pass the witness. Michelle. Just very, very briefly. Um, Ms. Moore, are, uh, you mentioned that you didn't have any sort of criminal history. Is that also true of any CPS history in your home? Oh, yes. I've never had anything. No CPS, no criminal history, not for me or my husband. And then um, if baby Dennis is placed with you, would you be willing to continue to take him to his therapeutic services and appointments as necessary? Yes, I um, have a very good therapy uh, clinic here in town called Believe Therapies. 
I called them to ask if they were taking new patients. They are ready and willing. I'm a stay at home mom, so I can take him to as many appointments as is needed. I remember hearing in the um, last meeting we had with the CPS that they would like for him to get two or three, I think, times a week. That would be so easy for me to get him to those appointments. And I would you know, be happy to do that for him. If there were a delay in any sort of funding or anything that would be needed to start his therapy immediately with you, would you be able to cover those costs if you had to? Oh, yes, of course. We will pay for it. Yes. We want him to have whatever it is that he needs. And then long term, uh, we don't know what the outcome holds for Mr. Price, but if necessary, would you be willing to adopt baby Dennis um, as as a permanent solution? Yes, me and my husband are both willing and would love to adopt him. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Ms. McClure. Yes, Judge, a few questions. Um, Ms. Moore, um, I'd like to go a little bit more into detail about the drama. You talked about the drama at Kingsland, but I'd like to know what all details did you have about the drama at Kingsland? I really got left in the dark a lot about it. I learned more after he was taken. That's when I've learned more. I've learned a lot later on. I knew that there were police being called. I knew that um, things were happening. I knew that uh, there was assault with my mother. I I knew a little bit, but I knew that if there was ever police involved, I didn't want to be involved. And so I, that's, that was enough for me if there was police getting involved, but I was very much kept in the dark. I really didn't know much about it. Now I knew that CPS was involved at some point. And so I felt like, um, that was a good thing. And I thought that that meant that, you know, that things were getting taken care of and that he was getting, um, what, you know, getting watched and that he would be doing good with that. But I wasn't really sure of how, how the, you know, what was actually happening. I I wasn't sure. And I'm still really not sure. Did, did anything ever happen that you knew about before the removal that worried you about Dennis's safety and Canyon's safety? Well, no, not really, because any time that there was any kind of a safety issue, I think the police were called and CPS was involved. So I thought that they would have that under control. I wasn't sure of anything. I've never witnessed any kind of situation that I could have called on. I know that they were called in situations. So, um, I wasn't ever a witness to anything like that, but I knew that there was, you know, police and stuff. So I assumed that they had it under control. Do you know of any um, prior relationships your brother had that involved domestic violence? No, I do not. Um, You you never spoke with any of his ex-girlfriends and never knew of any allegations of any violence? Nobody's. Objection, what for? Relevance, Your Honor, um, she she's known this family longer than just about anybody else, and I'm just trying to find out how aware she should have been of uh, violence in that family, and if there had been a history of prior domestic violence, then one would hope that she would have a heightened sense of protectiveness in this relationship. It's just not relevant to placement, Judge. If we start getting into the allegations of violence within this household then this hearing is going to turn into something very different. This is all about protectiveness. I think we've already opened up the door as to everything involved in everybody's household. So it's going to be overruled. You can go ahead and answer, Ms. Moore. Okay. No, I've never heard of anybody ever giving me any kind of indication that there was violence from him. Nobody ever told me anything about that. And Nancy never, ever discussed anything with you about any violence from Dennis? No, no. I've never heard anybody tell me anything about violence from him. Not with any girlfriends or anything. When's the first time you became aware that Dennis was violent? I'm not aware that he is violent. I don't know that I've. I mean, I don't know. Okay, I'm trying to state that I'm not sure that I've never seen anything. I don't know what's happened. I'm not sure what happened between the two of them. Um, This would be the only time that I've ever known that anything like this was happening. I've never been, uh, I've never seen anything like this with him where things were called a lot like this. It was a very different, very more dramaful uh, situation than I've ever seen. 
So you did realize that there had been some violence that he had been accused of, which was the basis of the removal. But that was the day I, I've, what my understanding was, is that that was the ba- that was the day that he was removed. So I thought that that was probably a good thing to get him removed. But I wasn't sure of any other times that there was um, violence. I, um, I personally thought the violence was between um, a lot of the times, but it was my mom. I know that that happened. But I was very in the dark on if there was so much violence. I thought there was a lot of maybe arguing and stuff and um, and things like that. But I wasn't aware of it being this violent or what is said to have happened. So um, when you got the phone call about what happened with Carrie, what was your reaction? Are you talking about what happened on October 3rd? Yes, I am. Of that? Um, it was total disbelief, crying, upset. I was so, um, I was shocked. I was completely shocked. Because you had no idea that he, that that level of violence could be in. No, I, I had no idea that it would ever come to something like that. No, no. Um, the pictures that uh, you provided your attorney, um, did, did, you ever think that maybe uh, Dennis was a little overweight? I did feel like he was. Yes. And I made the you- comment. I did make the comment to, um, to my mother and, um, and to Carrie, but they, they both seemed like he was fine. <laughs> okay. So whenever you had him, did you do what you could to encourage healthy foods and healthy amounts? Yes. I feel like, um, a lot of the times, um, Dennis was, he was a fussy baby. And so a lot of the times the only thing that would make him happy was maybe some more milk. And so that sometimes got, that was part of the problem. I think that I noticed when he was around me. And so, yes, I I would try to, you know, divert his attention from having more food and try to change, you know, his uh, attention to something else to kind of help him get over that, uh, being upset about that. But no, I think he was a fussy baby. Okay. Um, you said that y'all are not dependent upon Nancy for any support. No, I mean, she's my mother. So yes, I've had her support me in the past of, you know, being with my children, but I'm not dependent upon her. No, I have plenty of other people to depend on. So did you initially retain the first attorney to file the intervention? Yes. And, and you paid for that yourself? Wait, hold yes. on. Ms. Fuller, you, you cut out. Oh, I'm sorry. Internet problem. Re- relevance as to a- attorneys getting paid. I, I didn't even hear. It. I didn't even hear. It. I didn't hear it, so I, I, was, I can't comment. I was asking her. She had testified that they were not financially dependent on Nancy, and so therefore, I was asking: Did they retain the initial attorney, and did they pay for it? Because he opened the door on their finances, and I am just clarifying whether Nancy paid for this or whether they paid for this. Still objection relevance. Oh, rule. Um, so let's clarify. Tell me again who retained the attorney and who paid for the attorney. Um, are you talking about D- Mr. Davis? Um, I'm talking about the first attorney. Okay. Well, the first attorney, um, we found her, me and my mother at the time that that we found her, and um, and my uh, my mother did pay for her. I uh, just because we were in a frantic, you know, situation and we got retained her. I retained Mr. Davis myself. I wanted a little better attorney. I wasn't happy with how the other attorney was being. So I got her, I got a new one. You mentioned that the relationship, uh, but uh, you said that Jane uh, Carrie had told you that the relationship between Carrie and Jamie was toxic. Mm-hmm. What is a toxic relationship? What does that look like in your mind? Well, it, uh, in my mind, you know, it's being too much and, you know, arguing, I, arguing. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. Besides that's what she was explaining it to me as so what she thought the relationship was toxic. She called her, um, well, she, 
I don't want to say it, but she called her a B word. She said she was very uh, controlling and that was very toxic to her because she would constantly be um, expecting her to follow her rules and do what she told her to do and be there for her and then not be there for her and, you know, go back and forth on how she, you know, when Jamie wanted to be in her life or when she didn't want to be in her life and when she didn't like what she was doing or when she did. And um, she's the one that used those words as toxic and controlling. You mentioned that uh, she had said and texted and emailed apparently several times that she wanted you to be the placement. Yes. And that was my understanding. And she sent them to me. <clears throat> and um, so you were very supportive of that. Yes, of course. Um, and if, I, I would assume then that if Carrie also mentioned other people as possible placement, that you would also be supportive of those people? Um, well, I know the relationship and I know what she's told me about them. So I love Dennis the third and I do want him to be in a safe place. And with all of the information that she has given me over the, you know, this time, I do feel like it's in his best interest to be with me. So I wouldn't think that that would be a good place for him. I feel like she was in a moment of um, anxiety when she said that and when she was saying and when she would say any of that. So I wouldn't think that that was the right place for him. No. So, so you picked and chosen which statements of hers you think were made in a rational state of mind and which ones were not. Well, she never told me that she thought that he, sh that the baby should go to anybody else. She never told me that she said, I might have to do that because they're not giving him to you. She what never told me that that's where he needs to go. No, I never, she's never told that to me. Do you think that it was possible she wanted to keep you happy by letting you believe that you were the only one that she was seeking placement with? Objection. Calls for speculation. Your Honor, it goes to her state of mind and whether or not she was being intimidated while she was with the Price family. Sustained. Did she ever exhibit any fear of what if she changed her mind, would Nancy be upset with her? No, because she actually wanted Nancy to have placement. She would tell me, I want Nancy to have placement, but you, if she can't get placement. And then she said, go ahead and it'd be you because they're not going to give him to Nancy. So no, she was not. She would call my mom about 20 times a day. I mean, they were very close. So if at some point during this hearing, if you hear that she actually made it very clear that she was scared of the Price family, since it came from Carrie's mouth and you support the things that Carrie told you, would you believe that those things could be true as well? I mean, she could think whatever, I mean, she wants, I, I am not afraid of them, but I guess she could have you been mentioned towards the end of your testimony that you didn't know the mental state. Um, I can't remember if you were simply referring to Carrie or if you were referring to Carrie and Dennis, can you clarify that? I'm not sure. I understand. You, you said that um, I didn't Carrie, know the uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You had said that uh, Carrie and Dennis said mean things to each other. They were trying to hurt each other and you didn't know their mental state. I just wanted to oh, clarify. Were you okay. talking about Carrie or were um, you talking about Dennis or both? Well, at that moment, she was asking me about Dennis. And um, no, I don't know what I'm saying by that. What I mean by that is that they both have a very um, roller coaster of emotions of a mental state. That, they, that you don't know one moment from the next of what they're, you know, uh, you know, whether they're being really mean to each other or if they're over it now they're being really sweet to each other. So I, I wouldn't know exactly why he was saying those words is what I was saying earlier. I don't know. Um, a moment ago, you did mention that Nancy, uh, she had wanted Nancy, but it might not be allowed. What, what was there about Nancy might not be allowed to be placement? Well, they took him away from Nancy and Carrie thought that he was in a safe place with Nancy. So if they took, if CPS took him away from Nancy, then they might not give him back is what her biggest problem was, is what she was so worried about. So she said, just give him to Abigail that way he gets in one of our homes. So you weren't really the first choice. You were just the best backup. Well, I think I was my, um, well, I mean, I guess so. Um, 
How far away do Nancy and Dennis live or did they live? In the Kingsland property? Mm -hmm. In the Kingsland property, they live walking distance. They're very close. I don't know what that would be. Very close. And um, what level of, how unsafe did it have to be in Kingsland to make you not want to stay there very often? What kind of things scared you about it? Well, Hold like on, I said, I, I, didn't, stop. I didn't hear that question. What kind of things happened in Kingsland at Nancy's house and Dennis's house that kept you from wanting to stay there very often? Um, a lot of fighting is all I heard. A lot of arguing. Matt, I just knew that there was arguing and that there was police involved. Between who? Who argued? Dennis and Carrie. Was Nancy ever involved in any of these? I know that that many times Dennis would call her to get the baby or something in that case. And she would go over there. I knew that she was there many times. I mean, that's what they told me. All right. I'll pass the witness, Judge. Anybody have any more questions, Ms. Moore? No, I'll do brief uh, redirect, Judge. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Uh, Moore. Um, since we're now we're going to start talking about this broad term drama. Let's. You did not. You stated earlier you weren't really in the thick of it when it was going on. Did you come to learn more of it from Carrie later on? Yes, and from many people would tell me more. Oh. I was kept very much in the dark. Okay, so you're not denying that there may have been some conflict going on, of course, with with Dennis and Carrie that you just didn't quite understand the extent of, right? Right. Nobody was openly calling you up saying, hey, there was an assault last night with either Carrie on Dennis or Dennis on Carrie, right? No, no, no. Okay. Or vice versa, something involving your mom. You weren't getting those kind of calls, correct? No, okay. no. But but since this case has been going on, you, you now have a better understanding of, of where things are, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, I think I do. Okay. So let's talk about some of the things that Carrie had talked to you about. The drama with her own family, she talked about her and Jamie did not have the best relationship, correct? Yes. What did she say about Jamie's relationship with her mother? That would be grandmother, the Parkers. Yes. Uh, she said that they did not have a good relationship. There was um, there was a time when Jamie, uh, well, when Carrie lived in Jamie's home that she was, uh, Carrie was buying from Jamie. And um, Jamie kicked her out, kicked her and Wesley out. They had nowhere to go. So they ended up moving in with Dennis. But at that time, um, Billy was helping her move out, I think, in some way. And Jamie told them they weren't allowed on the property and they put no trespassing um, orders or signs up where Billy wasn't allowed. It just seemed very much like there was always things like that going on between them. That was another reason why I felt like that, that, you know, was very um, kind of unpredictable, even with all of them, they were very unpredictable. They were all fighting. Jamie and Billy would either not be talking or, you know, have lots of bad things to say about each other. Okay. Let me ask you this though. So was, so when, when, when Carrie was pregnant with baby Dennis, she had a baby shower, correct? Yes. Okay. Oh yes. Who, and who, she, so, um, I actually drove over there at that occasion and I, I can't really recall what, else was happening at that time, whether it was my nephew being born, uh, my other nephew or something like that. But I went to see them and I gave Carrie and it might've been Thanksgiving or something. But anyways, I gave Carrie a gift um, before it was the morning of the baby shower. I gave her a gift then because I was not going to go to Jamie's house. I felt like that was not a safe place for me to be with the, the many arguments on Facebook without, with different people, the many arguments through everybody. And, um, and actually Carrie was very apprehensive as, of to go herself. She really didn't want to go. And my mom and my sister, Terry, and my niece, Kylie, my grandmother, um, and they all grabbed her and said, come on, let's go. We'll go. But her, she was very upset because Billy was actually not allowed to be at the baby shower because there was, um, Jamie had orders on her or wouldn't allow her to um, come. She had no trespassing up against Billy. So she wasn't allowed at the baby shower. So, so Jamie indicates that Billy, that's her mother, is is her her support system out there. But during this time frame, is it your testimony that they were having no trespassing on each other, calling the cops on each other? Or, I mean, at least there was no trespassing. I do know that for sure. Um, none of that's, of course, disclosed in their home studies, though, right? No. 
Okay. And they don't, they, they don't mention anything about any abuse that they, that, that, that was going on in their households. Correct. No, they don't. And, um, okay. Carrie told me that there was a lot of abuse. They said that, um, that, um, James and Jamie have a, um, you know, a very abusive relationship. And she also stated that her stepfather, John is very abusive throughout their childhood. And that's one reason why she did not want the baby there. She did not trust the amount of alcohol and drugs that were done between her family members and also the amount of abuse. She told me many times that that's where she learned how to be that way. Their family all fought with their fists and their aggression, and that was normal in their household. And um, and she, you know, she said that was completely normal. Everybody did that. And that's why she didn't want the baby around any of it. Okay, and then let's talk about just a few more things. So Wesley's relationship, just to clear this up, Wesley was her her half-sister's son, correct? Uh, yes, I, I mean, I know it was Laura Henderson's son, her, so her nephew. Okay, okay. Th th that's, that's, that's her half-sister. So, um, okay. so, so Laura or Lori got into trouble and she had to give up, um, give him up, correct? Yes, that's my did understanding. Carrie, did Carrie tell you why? Uh, uh, Billy couldn't get him and why Abigail I'm, I'm sorry, and then why um, Jamie would not take him. No, um, she was, she told us many times that she felt like she had to, they made her, she didn't want to. She was very upset that she had to do that. She felt like she was young. Uh, she was still, um, you know, she, she didn't want any children. Her and Cody were doing fine. They were young, they were having fun and they didn't want, she didn't want a child. So she was very upset about that. She said that Jamie and Billy and everybody in their family that they couldn't get him because they either had felons or, um, backgrounds or lived with a felon or any kind of situation that would stop them. So she was the only one that was able to stand, uh, you know, step forward. So they, you know, pushed her to do that. And she was very upset about it. And she really didn't want to do it. Okay. And then subsequently she terminated her rights to Wesley, right? Yes. She said he was just too much. She couldn't handle it. And, um, she had, she actually told us she had no business raising, um, him. She wasn't good. He kept, he, you know, he wasn't good for her to, you know, she wasn't good for him is what I'm trying to say. She wasn't good for him. She would, anytime that she was supposed to have him on her weeks, she would give him to my mom the whole time so that she wouldn't have to worry with it. Cause she just didn't feel like she could mentally handle it. So now let's talk. Um, they were talking to you about how you felt about Carrie. You, you loved Carrie. Is that correct? I did love Carrie. I did love Carrie very much. Okay. We can all agree this is, is very tragic while, while, while we're in this to begin with and what has happened since then, correct? Very tragic. Yes. So um, that being said, it, I know this is hard to do, but, but, you know, Carrie um, had a, had a, had a lot of challenges, correct? Yes, that's my understanding. She was put yeah. in a mental, she was put in a mental institute by um, a police officer in Seabrook for sure. You know, she was acting so erratic. She was put in there. I know. Um, I'm not quite sure any other, you know, times, but I know that she's told me that um, Cody Young put her, you know, admitted her before. So, I mean, I, I knew that she had some issues and that she had medicine that she was supposed to be taking and stuff. Okay. And, and she was not, she made a lot of mistakes with Wesley, right? Yes. Yes, Fair she did. She, she did some did a little trauma to Wesley too, correct? Yes. And she told us that. I mean, she said, you know, this is, um, I have no business having him. I, you know, she told us about the time that she ran her car into the side of Cody Young, his father's house. And, um, and that she, you know, tried to, she was going to drive off of a bridge one day with Wesley in the car with her. She told us that she's made very bad decisions, you know, with him and that she had no business having him. And you, we don't we didn't want to have to come in here and do this. Right. Did we want to come in here and air all this stuff? No, I do not. I don't like this at wanting, all. You've just been wanting placement since September, right? Yes, that's and, all I want. And, and as was pointed out, I guess you were the backup, right? Essentially, I guess you can put it that way, that um, she had a, whether 
people want to say that um, she did or not. She had a very close relationship with my mother. She loved my mother. I have many a messages between the two of them that she even sent to me saying that um, that my mother was her top supporter and um, and loved her very much. And she, you know, they had a great relationship. So yes, she did want my mom. She, she loved my mom and they were very close, but she also knew that if she couldn't have my mom, she would want me because she's been to my house. She's seen my home. She's seen how clean it is. She was very worried about cleanliness. She, you know, was worried about whether or not he would be loved. He would be held. He would be, um, you know, those things were very, you know, very important to her. And she knew I would do that. She watched me do that. She watched my daughter hold him and love him. And she even said that to me, my two youngest children are crazy about Dennis, crazy about him and crazy about the two other nephews. They just love them so much. They just give them so much attention. And that's what she called and told me. She said, you know, I can just see how much, you know, they just love him and that they're going to take care of him and love him. And that's where I want him to be, where y'all will love him and take care of him. So, so, but as you testified earlier, you're, while you got to know Carrie more, you knew of her, but she clearly knew your mother a longer foundation, correct? Oh yeah. She told, yeah, they had a very close relationship. Told so, would, so would it make sense that she wanted to, she wanted somebody that she'd known for the longest probably as primary? Yes. And she also made the statement to um, many people that, that my mother had Canyon. So why can't she have Dennis and put Dennis and Canyon together where they were already, you know, Dennis was already used to being with my mom all the time. She didn't want his life changed. She wanted it to, you know, stay with people that he knew. Right, but that being said, that being said, um, regarding where you are, if you're the backup, these other people, so this aunt that they're now talking about, that's Miss Anderson, right? Is is that the text that, that went out where she said, oh, I, I, my gay aunt that I found will take him and She's been through a lot of trauma, but she'll take him in now. Is that the one we're talking about? Yes. And that's what she wrote us. I put it out on Facebook and she said she would take him. Okay. And so if you were the backup, <laughs> the people in Carrie's family, though, they were the backups and backups and backups. Is that what, is that what I'm That hearing? is I my mean, understanding <laughs> from her. That is my understanding. That is how she made it very clear to me is that she wanted me and um, and she was very upset that they, you know, nobody was giving him to me. But more so than she, she wanted was, you, more than she wanted you, she wanted him out of foster care, right? The very most important thing to her was that he was out of foster care. That's the witness. Anybody else have any questions of Ms. Moore? I do, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Moore. Abigail, you were, we were talking about... Um, you didn't know about, you didn't know much about the drama, I think is what you said. You didn't know about the violence. Is that right? I didn't know the yeah, extent. You, okay. And you knew about arguing, right? Right. And you even said that the parents, um, Carrie and Dennis had roller coasters of mental state and they'd say mean things to each other. I mean, they, they well, that's fought, what right? Carrie Yes. And that's what Carrie would state to me is what I was saying is that when she sent me that message, you know, she stated to me many times, that's what we do. And, um, and I, you know, I was explaining to her that that is not what I do. I'm an even person. I'm going to tell you how I feel and I'm not going to be mean one minute and the next, she was very worried. She was, um, she was actually very worried about that because when she took in Wesley, she wouldn't allow uh, Laura to see him much because it was hard on uh, Wesley. He would cry and then that would be hard on Carrie. So she was very worried that, you know, anybody else would do that to her. And she would tell me things about that. And I would say, no, Carrie, I want you to be a part of your son's life. And that's very important to me. And it's very important that everybody gets to be in his life. And she would tell me well, that's what her and Dennis would do is be mean, you know, say very mean things to each other. So that's where I came to understand that text message is all I'm saying. I don't know I, where it came from. I understand. So you're aware that CPS was involved in their life before baby Dennis was taken out of the home, right? You knew that there was a participation case going something. there, was some involvement. Right? I knew there was something. Right. And so you're aware that, um, you know, you talked about knowing Carrie went to the state hospital mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I know, you know, your mom, they got in an altercation and your mom actually broke her fingers. 
Carrie's fingers. Um, did your mom put that on that group text and let everybody know about that and hold everyone up to put that? In oh, your no, prayers? you didn't. I don't know anything about that. You didn't know anything at all about an incident as Carrie and CPS gets called in around April the 12th. And prior to that, you knew Carrie went to the state hospital, right? Well, yes, I know that that happened. They, I was told that it happened. I don't know if I was told immediately or way after, but I was told that it happened. But I don't know anything about uh, fingers being broken. I was never told anything about that. So, I mean, your mother um, attended a family group conference, I believe, and there had been an expression of an awareness of these, these kids need to quit fighting. This isn't a good environment for the kids. She never told you that? Did your mother tell I, you that she was concerned about the environment for the kids? Oh, well, she had him. So I, I was assuming that she had that under control with her and CPS. She was following CPS rules. So I was told that they were arguing. Yes. I mean, I, I, like I said, I knew that there was something going on. I wasn't sure of the full extent. Mm -hmm. So you said earlier you were concerned about your children being around that, but if there's not violence going on and it's not anything you didn't know about, what was it you didn't want them to be around? Well, like I said earlier, I don't want my kids to see cops pulling up. I don't want my children to say, um, you know, what are they arguing about? I don't want, I don't even care if it's just two people arguing each other, cussing each other out. I don't know what's going to happen, but if that is what it is, even that small of a thing to me is something I would never want my children to be around any kind of a yelling match. Uh, calling each other ugly names. That's not something my children have ever seen. They've never seen a cop pull up and ask for, you know, what just happened and talk to everybody. I would be mortified if my children got pulled over to ask, uh, you know, to witness a situation. No, I, I have, it couldn't be small as that because they've never seen anything like that. Nowhere around in my house or around anybody that I'm around, is there ever cops being called or arguments? That's not something they've ever seen. So yeah, I, I you know around that. Go ahead. How did you? Thank you. How did you know the cops were being called? Well, I was just told at different times that the cops came out, but I mean that I wasn't told the full extent. I just knew that there was cops at one point. I mean, I was like, okay, is everybody okay? Is the baby okay? Mm -hmm. You know, and CPS is involved. So I'm like, okay, so is everybody okay? And that's where it was, you know, that's what I was told. And I said, okay. So did your mom reach out to the group test and ask for the family support that you guys are to hold the Carrie and Dennis up in their prayers for? Well, yes, better. of course we prayed for them, but I would never known if it was anything other than, you know, prayer. I pray. We've set out, you know, ask for prayer about all kinds of things on them. So we don't ask what exactly it is that we're praying about other than arguments and stuff and for people to get along and have a good marriage. Yeah, we've prayed for that for sure. Have you attended, um, did you go to any of the team meetings or anything with CPS prior to the removal of the baby? Any no. conferences for Carrie? She didn't ask you to come along for any no, of that I, until I don't the think baby she, was removed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I don't think she was wait worried minute, that the baby. Minute. I didn't get the end of that question. Did you attend any of the conferences um, with Carrie prior to the baby being removed? No, I was not involved with any of that. And you have had opportunities to go visit with baby Dennis now, correct? Yes, I have. How many times has your husband gone with you on those visits? He's went twice. He has a very hectic uh, job and it's very hard to get away from it. But um, and it's a very far drive for us. We're, we're pretty far away. It takes a takes the whole day for us to go over there. But yes, he's been twice. How many times have you gone, Abigail? Um, I'd have to count that. It's been December, January, February, March. So a pretty good amount of times. So in four months, he's only gone to visit the baby two times. Yes. Okay. And whenever Dennis was with Heather, um, did she share with you then concerns about Dennis being abusive towards her? No, she did to not. You? Okay. I passed the wings. 
Ms. Moore, you've testified that uh, Nancy Price was not allowed to be placement of the child. Do you know why that was not allowed? I'm, I didn't really, in the beginning, what I was saying is, is that, that Carrie was scared that they wouldn't place her. But yes, I am aware now at what happened or that they won't place him with her. Do you know why? I was told tampering with the witness. Um, you testified that you were kept in the dark about the drama in Kingsland um, and that Nancy lived within walking distance of Carrie and Dennis. Mm -hmm. So is it fair to say that Nancy kept you in the dark about the drama there as well? Yes, I didn't. I didn't know about any of it, really. I passed the witness. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Can I ask questions, Judge? Yes, ma'am. Oh, is that Michelle? Yes, Judge. Yes, ma'am. Um, Ms. Moore, I want to go back to something you mentioned that was sort of not really um, developed and maybe it needs to be. Um, did you say in your testimony that there was a point in which Carrie lived with Ms. Dyer? Uh, yes, I think she she lived in the home of Miss Dyer. She was buying her home whenever and she I, I'm not sure like if she was married to Alex or divorced Alex, but it was somewhere in that in this that time zone. It was before Dennis. She okay. had that home. I'm sorry. When you said buying from Jamie, I really didn't know what that meant. You meant buying yeah. a home. Buying a home. Yes. OK, that's all I have. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. I mean, okay. just to clear, if I could just ask one, or maybe two clarifying statements just to make yes, sure we're, we understand the facts. Um, now, uh, Abigail, regarding the this April incident that you were just asked about by Ms. Lang, um, following that, Harry wasn't allowed to be around baby Dennis or uh, alone, correct? Yeah, they, that was my... Well, I mean, that was my understanding that I know of now. I wasn't completely sure of that back then, but yes, that was that's my understanding is that he she was not allowed to be alone with him because she was the aggressor and assaulted, or that's who the police were pointing it at, and CPS was looking at back in April. Correct? Yes, it, that's what I was told is that she was the aggressor. Okay. So again, not to beat up on anybody, but. This has gone back and forth for quite some time. It's a pressure cooker, basically. Is that how you would describe their relationship? Yes. Okay. Pass witness, Judge. Anybody else? No, Your Honor. No, ma'am. Uh, Miss Price, I mean, I'm sorry, Miss Parker, you're a pro se litigant, and I forgot to ask you if you have any questions, Miss Moore, do you? Uh, yes. Do you have any questions of Miss Moore? Oh, uh, well, Close the door. nothing that I can really put into a question. I'm surprised she has so much negative information okay. about. So you'll, get, you'll get your opportunity to testify later. Just no questions now, correct? Uh, do you no, you're the intervener, not your husband. Do you have well, any questions? Uh, yes, I was wondering if she was also aware. Uh, that she, that daughter Carrie was insulted by her sister Terry, thrown off the porch of her own home. Also, was she? Hold on, that's one question. We got to get an answer. Miss Moore, did you hear that? Yes, I know. I was not aware of that. Okay. Next question. Uh, were you also aware of when there was an argument with Carrie and your mother Nancy? that her father tackled a pregnant woman and had his back, had his knee in her back down? I'm not aware that anything like that happened. Okay, thank you. Anybody else, any questions, Ms. Moore? I did one more judge, I'm sorry, I forgot. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Lyons. Thank you. So Ms. Moore, we heard a lot of testimony about um, the Carrie side of the family. In fact, as you're speaking about it, you use words like afraid for the baby to be there. The baby's much safer with you and just um, the volatile environment they're in and just how toxic it is. Um, 
and you'd said earlier, you'd be open to allowing a balance of access to this child because he is Carrie's side of the family too. Are you saying that you're just not going to feel comfortable with that? Or how are you going to overcome that animus that you have to be able to foster a healthy relationship for this child and the other side of the family? Well, I just, I do think it's important. I am a, um, I can get along with people and I think that it's important as long as they're being safe that, that he gets to know that side of the family. I think that is very important. Did you, you, did your attorney share with you the results of all the home studies? Yes. So you've, you've read them all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you think the state of Texas got it wrong whenever they said that Kathy Anderson's home is there's no concerns at all. Um, the, her partner had used some marijuana, but I believe they were able to overcome that as a risk problem. Did the state get it wrong with Kathy Anderson? Well, I personally believe that um, drugs should not be allowed around a child or ever used. So I would think that was very wrong. But if their home is safe, then I don't know. I've never seen their home or know anything about it, but I would assume their home so, is safe. And I don't know. And the, the state of Texas did a risk assessment and a summary of Miss Billy Parker's home as well. And there were things that were listed um, in terms of risk and things. Nothing along the line of what you've shared is your concerns for the safety in these homes. They talked about firearms. Um, they talk about her being a victim of family violence 30 years ago. And that just needs to be known that she had been a victim in the past. Mr. Parker has a history of a couple of DWIs that are two years old. And they needed a fire extinguisher, pet vaccinations, and to childproof some things. But if they mitigated all that, which is pretty much not a hard thing to do, the state could easily improve them as well. Do you think the state's messing up by approving Miss Billy Parker's home as an appropriate placement for this child? Um, due to what I have learned by uh, from Carrie, I believe that what she said about them, about their house being very filthy and full of clutter and that she didn't trust his behavior. Yes, I, I would think that that wouldn't be the right place to be. The state of Texas didn't see that because they look at the, the home and if it's clean and tidy and things, did, they must have missed that one. I think it was on the home got study. I think it was on the home study. And we also have pictures that she sent us st um, stating the clutter and the problems that were in the house. To um, Jamie Dyer's home study on the risk assessment form, the things that they pointed out, um, access to the lake, they needed a gate, pet vaccinations, and having it child-proof, those things have been mitigated. The one big thing was her husband's uh, criminal negligent homicide, which just in on its own in terms of how the department has chosen to look at this is what had them not be approved. So did they miss the details that you, that Carrie was sharing with you when they looked at everything else? They didn't talk anything about dog hair and unsafe, unsanitary place for a child. Any other concerns? Well, Those were not part of the risk assessment. Well, that was part of Carrie's assessment. And that is part of what she told me. And um, she was worried about aggression over there. Okay. I pass the witness. Just one question. Miss Moore, uh, you, you went to great lengths to tell us about the things that Carrie said about various people. And you um, put stock in what she said. These are the things she told you. These were her concerns. So if later on, if we find out that Carrie told people things that were not good about you or your family, those are also going to be just as true because Carrie said them, correct? Well, I think uh, one thing with Carrie is, is what point of, you know, mental state that she was in. And, um, but, you know, I believe what she told me and that's all I know. And so if she told other people other things, then you don't know what the mental state was. You wouldn't be able to say which one was true and which one wasn't, would you? No, I wouldn't. Thank you, Judge. Anybody else? No. Okay. I have a couple questions. And Ms. Moore, this is just, it's not any typical order because it's all over what all these lawyers were asking you. Okay. So no rhyme or reason to these questions. Do you know where Wesley lives now? I am. Um, I think he lives with his uh, dad, Cody Young, and his stepmom. Okay. In and Kingsland. 
I, now, you said that, and I don't really get all this. You said that Carrie adopt, I guess Carrie adopted or had custody because she adopted since she did a voluntary update or like relinquishment. She had Wesley and Wesley was Laura's son, correct? That's what I was told. And who was Wesley's biological father? I don't know his name. He's in jail, I think. Cody Young. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Judge didn't hear what your question was. Okay. You don't know who his father, a bio father was, correct? I don't know his name. I know that he was in um, prison, I think, at some point. Wesley told me that. Okay. Then Carrie and Cody adopted Wesley. Yes, they did together. They were married and they adopted him together. Miss Moore, when was the last time you've seen in person any of the maternal relatives? At the at the visitations, I see Jamie. Okay. That's the and only time I've ever met. I've no, I've never seen Jamie before besides the visitations. I thought y'all went to baby showers. No, 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 no. I said I did not attend that baby shower. I didn't want to be around anybody. I wasn't, I wasn't sure about that family. So I didn't want to go to that. I came to give her a gift myself just to carry. And have you ever had any phone conversations, texts, emails with any of the maternal relatives? No, I've had one conversation uh, of passing, I guess, really, with uh, Billy and John. They came to my parents' house one time. I think it was um, a, maybe a fish fry or something we had at one point. I stopped to buy, and they they came, and we had a great time. They were very nice, and we had a great conversations and had a fun little get-together. I think it was Carrie's maybe a birthday. Okay. Was Jamie and her husband there on that party? No, the only people that came, it was just a small little, you know, family thing. And um, I came in to see my nephews, I assume. And the only people from her side were Billy and John. And it was kind of like a shocker that they were coming and it was kind of like, great, this is, this is good. Everybody's going to be, you know, happy and get along. This is good. This is really good. And we had a good time. So did you just meet Jamie during these exchanges of, of baby Dennis at the visitation? Yes. The first, uh, the first visit, um, Raphael had us come in together, uh, between our visits. And that was my first, um, encounter with Jamie and James. Have you ever met Laura? No, I have not. Okay. Um, Ms. Moore, are you aware that we've had a prior case involving your brother and Canyon prior CPS case? I am vaguely aware. I'm not, I don't know exactly what was, you know, in it, but I'm vaguely aware. And isn't that how your mom got primary custody? I don't know if it's primary or joint, but that your mom got custody of Canyon? Well, she was given rights of Canyon when he was very young. I think that was him and her and Dennis had rights. I don't know how legal stuff works like that, but I thought she already had custody from when he was very young. Okay. Do you know why that prior CPS case started? Uh, because I'm, I'm pretty sure, not completely sure, but I think my mother called CPS because of um, Dennis's wife, Nicole, um, drug use. Okay. And are you aware that there was family violence in that case also? No, I was not aware of that. I thought it was just drug use. Um. Okay. Do you know of um, if Dennis has any prior drug use with any of these women or any prior criminal history? Oh, I don't know from firsthand knowledge or anything. I've just been told maybe before that he's might have done drugs, but I mean, I don't really know that for a fact. What about any prior criminal history? Have you ever heard of any of that? Not anything other than DUIs. Okay. Um, now, now bumping around another subject, uh, you said you talked to your, uh, therapist provider in Huntsville, correct? Yes. Yes, ma'am. And did you ask them if they accept the, uh, type of insurance that Dennis is on, baby Dennis is on now? I, 
No, ma'am. I asked if they would do cash pay because I would be a cash pay. So I didn't know about what kind of insurance, you know, I'm not um, completely sure on what, if he even had insurance, if, you know, he was with me or not. My children are cash pay. So I would assume that I would do the same for him that I do for my children. So I, I just asked if they had availabilities and took new patients because I, that was what I was asking. But if you found out that, I mean, you found out the kind of insurance that baby Dennis is on, you could ask them about that too, correct? Oh, yes, of course. And I'm very close to, um, that is just what's available here right in Huntsville, uh, right. right up the road from my um, house. I'm very close to some very big cities. And I mean, it only takes me 30 minutes to get to Texas Children's Hospital uh, to like their little clinics. That's where I take my son. He has a eye disorder. And so I take him to the, you know, the very best at uh, Texas Children's Hospital is the best. And so I would be very happy happy to drive him to Texas Children's Hospital and find any, you know, I know that they take all insurance. Right. So I would have no problem finding him a therapist anywhere that he, you know, that they would take him or I would pay cash. Okay, good. Um, now, Miss Moore, you talked a lot about the police being there and you don't want your children around that. I totally get that. I agree. Um why, why do you think the police were called if there hadn't been family violence in the past? Well, I just knew that there was something going on and that some, you know, that, that Dennis would call the police or my mom would call the police or my dad would call the police. I was told that they did. I'm not, you know, completely sure what was happening or if there was anything. I've never seen anything like this before mm -hmm. Carrie's relationship with Dennis it like this much I've never seen it and so um this was something very new to me that I'm not used to now I don't know if you know this or not you know at the very beginning of this case your mother filed an intervention you know that correct yes I mean I I didn't really understand what an intervention was or any of this until now but I knew that she was trying to get placement okay and was and y'all talk about she was the first choice you're the word backup and then we got more backup so do wasn't your mom the first choice until there were some criminal incidents down there in Seabrook no. actually I don't I don't know what you mean criminal incidents uh didn't Canyon and your mom get uh weren't there some problems down there between Canyon oh and oh when my okay yes I'm so sorry um okay so as far as I was told the night that the baby was taken the night that Dennis the third was taken I was called by Carrie and Dennis they called me they asked me to get him I started working on it immediately like I've already stated but as the you know that the couple of days go on Carrie was like I wish he could just stay with you, Nancy, where he's already been, he already knows you, he's with Canyon all the time. So, so it kind of, you know, would be easier for him to not have a big change, but then, you know, she was very happy for him to go to me also. So it was before that happened that she would go, you know, would just go ahead. And now this was before my mother's arrest. She said, just go ahead. And I would rather him just go to Abigail's and just be, you know, done with it. And that's when she started working really hard. I mean, these were days, this happened, you know, very quickly, you know, that she said, just make him go to, you know, just let's just get him to go to Abigail's. And um, this was all Carrie's you know, warnings. And I just, of course, accepted because why I, this is my nephew and I love my family. But um, after, after my mother's arrest, then of course she got taken out of it. And I did know that. And when you say arrest, it was, I think it occurred down there in Seabrook, but it was on the Solano County charge, correct? That's what I was told. Okay. Now, you, you say that Nancy and Dennis and Carrie's homes were within walking distance. Aren't they on the same property? Yes. Okay. And the, the property, is it owned by, is it owned by your mom? My mom and my dad, yes. Okay. Not anymore. Be it's quiet. Hard. Be quiet. Can y'all mute your device, please? Yeah. Anybody that's not talking needs to mute themselves. Um, she did it, Miss Dyer. Miss Moore, um, how many times had, do you know that Carrie's been married or in long-term relationships? You said Cody, Alex, Dennis. 
I, but I, I was told by her that she had, um, uh, other relationships where her and Cody either, you know, there was, there was different relationships in there that, that between Cody and Alex, that she had, um, some different men. I don't know names of people because I don't know anybody over there in that area, but I know that she had some other relationships in between those. Okay. And Dennis, Dennis was married to Carrie. He had a baby by Heather. Yes, yes. 2009. That's, that's Canyon's mom, right? Yes. And at the time CPS came involved in Canyon, he was married to who? What was her name? Nicole. And that was actually his first wife when he was young and he remarried her. Okay. So he's had two wives and a relationship with Heather. Yes. Any other long-term girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever it might be? Um, I wouldn't call them long-terms, but yes, he had many relationships. Okay. Um, we've heard lots of bad things about Carrie, um, but nothing really about Dennis or that situation. So you're saying you don't know anything about any of the other history that went on with your brother until this case came up? I know that there was times when he's, um, he's definitely had substance abuse. And so I do think that's why Canyon needed to be with my mom a lot of the time and most of the time. So I know that there was that I've not ever been aware of abuse, like with any other person with him. I didn't know of that, but I know that there has been um, DUIs and situations where he's been had substance abuse problems for sure. What and when you say substance abuse, what, what you know we deal with a lot of substances. What are you talking about? Okay. Well, personally, I don't know what substances he's ever taken. I don't have a clue. I know that I've seen him. Um, you know, alcohol would be one that, of course, you do in front of people that you know what it is. But I don't have a. I have no clue what else he's ever used in his system i don't know I what just, about i'll oh, go on i'm sorry you go ahead what about thanks what about any stuff used by case yeah she um i've watched her i mean well i've watched her a few times um drink some and i don't know it might have been pretty excessive in my taste because there's a baby sitting with us at a restaurant. And so I feel like, you know, that would be an excessive amount to me. But, um, you know, I wasn't around enough in those situations to see anything that I would. I mean, I was told things, but I don't I don't know. Okay. Um, what we talked about. Um, you talked about what Carrie said about dog pet hair, I think was the word you used at, at Jamie's house. Was um, Carrie and Dennis's house clean when you go over there? She cleaned it. She said that it was clean to her, you know, uh, taste, Carrie's. Um, I, like I said, I've walked in it maybe twice and it was, um, you know, it seemed very clean to me. Okay. And what about your mom's house? My mom's house is pretty, very clean. They don't have any animals in the house and there may be dust because she's not real good at that, but uh, the dog hair and stuff, she's, she doesn't have animals in the house. And so she's pretty good about keeping it clean. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any questions, Ms. Moore? I do judge. Ms. Lang. So Ms. Moore, um, so you don't know anything about a 2007 incident in Trinity, Trinity, Texas, when Dennis pulled a gun on his wife at that time, and that would have been Nicole Floyd. You don't know anything about that? Well, I was told about that, but she re, you know, said that it didn't happen the way that it was stated. I wasn't there, so I don't, I'm not really sure how that worked out or what happened there. And back when he was married to Heather, probably in 2008 or so, maybe 2009, you don't know anything about the night he choked her in a car and she went and stayed at Nancy's house and he came and stayed at your house. You don't know anything about that either. He stayed at my house. No, I don't remember that. I had many times that Heather and Dennis came to stay with Canyon at my house and our sons played together, but no, I do not remember a time like that. 
And so Nancy didn't talk to you about having to come pick up Heather at the bar at the police station uh, before she made the statement and Nancy took her back to her house. Your mother didn't tell you anything about that. I don't recall that. No, I pass the witness room. Anybody else? No, you're no, right. no. Okay. It's 1.15. We're going to take a 30 minute break and we'll be back at 1.45.